Meissner. I am uh, one of the race directors with the Chambersburg Y. Um, we want to first of all welcome all of you. Um, we're so excited for this year's race. It should be a fun time. Um, we start as a committee meeting in January. January-ish. Um, so I want to recognize all the people that help with on the committee. So when I when I say your name, wave or do something so that you guys as racers can all see who all is involved in planning the race. Um, Jim Nicholas, Joe Flanagan, who is the whole way in the back, Will Basher, he's over on the other corner, Bill Schaefer, Eric Valentine, I'm Chris, Barb Help, Laura Sponseller, and the other two who I do not believe are here are uh, Jody Forster and Nate Richards. Um, the two of them have joined our committee and helped with the promotion aspect of the committee this year. Um, but neither of them are here, so if you know who they are, make sure you thank them. Um, if you see these people around, make sure you thank them, because a lot of work goes into this race. Um, and we couldn't do it without the volunteers who help us put it together. So. Um, with the promotion committee, we had Laura Sponseller. Um, she kind of headed that committee portion up, so I'm going to have her come up and kind of talk a little bit about the sponsors. Thanks for that intro, Chris. Um, I think everyone can um, see the sponsors. We've been promoting them on the website and on our Facebook page. And as Chris said, without the volunteers, um, this race doesn't happen. Without our racers, the race doesn't happen. And without the sponsors, it doesn't happen. So we really encourage you to um, patron all the all the sponsors and thank them for um, their investment in MTech. And um, make sure to like like MTech and like their pages on Facebook. So that is my shameless plug. And if you're interested in sponsoring other Y things, uh, see Chris or myself. And there's some others, so. Thank you, sponsors. <laughs> um, to talk about the race, we're gonna have Eric Valentine and Jim Nicholas come up and give you some details about this year's event. Okay, so the first challenge is up on the screen, and this is the uh, challenge that takes place before the race even starts. Uh, you are going to be staging your bikes like we've done in the past. This time, uh, you are staging them, and, and while we're doing this, actually, I'm going to have Chris hand out these maps. So if every team captain can get your hand up and make sure you get a copy of that map. Uh, there's a couple things you need to know about the staging of the bikes. The first thing is this. It is going to be a very small and congested area. And so we're going to ask you, and then we're going to ask you again, and then we're going to strongly encourage you to make sure that you are organized before you come to stage your bikes. We can't, we don't have room, we don't have the luxury of having uh, a team member stroll in and then another team member come in a little bit later. We need you to be organized. Preferably consolidate bikes into one or two vehicles if possible and then come with bikes and all of the bike gear to your first check-in which is the bike check-in and that is the spot that's listed here. Uh, it is next to but not in uh, South Mountain Restoration Center and so you're going to need to be familiar with that area. You're going to need to make sure that you can get there and you're going to need to be there uh, at starting at 6.30. And we'll bring the time up here in just a second. The important thing is this. You're going to check bikes in, you're going to stage your bikes, and then you are going to go to the starting line. So you need to make sure that uh, you get your bikes officially checked in because you're going to get a ticket or something that says the bike portion of your check-in is done. And if you show up at the starting line and don't have that, uh, you're going to have a problem because that is part of what usually happens at the starting line. So we're asking you to check your bikes in separately. We're asking you to make sure that you do that in as organized a fashion as possible. There will be race volunteers there to direct traffic. Uh, there will be race volunteers there to check in the bikes. And basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna use a section of road 
in a one-way fashion. So we're going to ask you to move in, to drive in the road as far as you can, park on the shoulder of the road, check in with your bikes, and then when you're done checking in, not to backtrack on the road, but to finish, the road is actually a loop, uh, and you'll be able to get right back out onto the hardtop by continuing out the same direction that you've pulled in. So we're going to try and keep traffic moving. We're going to try and not create a giant congested mess. All of that, though, is contingent upon you, making sure that you're as consolidated and organized as possible before you get there so we can make this happen. And it's a short window, so if we can pull up the schedule. It's a small window that you have. Go ahead. If you don't have your whole group together, we are going to probably ask you to park in a parking lot right over in this section until your whole group comes just so that we're not blocking traffic, okay? So you got this window from, go, oh yes. So parking lot three down in Caledonia, we don't go to first. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. Your bikes are gonna get staged and then you are gonna go to parking lot three. But we're asking you to get your bikes there first because parking lot three winds up being the, your finish line, and so that's where your vehicles need to be for the day. So you've got this small window of 6.30 to 7.45 for everybody to get their bikes checked in and then get back to parking lot three at Caledonia. So everybody, bikes and the people, and one person check all the bikes in. That is a great question. Yeah. As long as you can yeah. account for all of the bike equipment, and it needs to be the, the team captain if it's going to be one person. That's the way we would prefer. Yeah. Or two. So you take that responsibility, say, I'm the captain or I'm the representative. You take responsibility for all four bikes and the check-in of that team. Yeah. Next question. Um, we usually get our numbers. How many are our numbers on the bikes? When you check in your bikes up there, there are people that's going to be checking in your um, the people up there to have your bike numbers. Okay. Okay. Right. So when you go in and you check in, they're going to give you the bike numbers with the zip ties, and you're going to put it on, and then you're going to get in the car and go back down, and you will actually get your racer numbers when you do race check in in Caledonia and Parking Lot Three. Typically, uh, you can do stuff at that strangest area. Uh, we are not going to be running a very subtle by the way that was very subtle yeah we're not going to run a shuttle service like we've done in the past to get toads back so whatever is there needs to be something you anticipate taking with you out of the bike transition that that's not an official transition point parking lot three but you will be returning to there so through the race you'll come back through parking lot three and then to a finish line after that so you could have stuff there and we'll make provisions where you can locate a tub or something uh, at three at three right, right. Not but not at the original not at the stage. original drop right. and all four racers must be present at the parking lot three check yes sir Bike helmets, do they stay with the bikes in the bike area? You need to have your bike helmet with you for the entirety of the race. Other questions about that? All right, so once you've done, yes? Did I hear correctly that you have to go to the parking lot three check in to get your bike numbers attached to them? And no, no. When you pull into the bike, bike drop off, staging area, they are going to check in your bikes, and that includes giving you the race numbers for your bikes. Okay, gotcha. Then you're going to do a second check-in with all the rest of your gear at parking lot three. Yeah, you did say there will be a, when you check in your bikes, whoever takes the responsibility will get a coupon, as it were, that you take the parking lot three that verifies my bikes for my team are in position. Then Barb will check you in as a team, knowing that your bikes are properly checked in. So once you've done that, there are a couple of other pretty important times to make note of. Uh, your racer check-in 
is going to end at 8 o'clock. So you've got from 6.30 to 7.45 to check in your bikes. But if you are standing up at the bike check-in at 7.45, just know it's going to take you 10 or 15 minutes to get back to parking lot 3. And your window is closing for race check-in. So try to be there early and be on top of things so that you can get back because race check-in, race your check-in is going to end at 8 o'clock. All right, so we've got a few other things happening. Volunteers will be meeting at 8.15. Worship service is at 8.30, and that is at the Oak Pavilion, right next to parking lot three. And then uh, at 8.45, we'll have scratch meeting. It's really important in that interval between 8.45 and nine o'clock, you get yourselves organized, because at nine o'clock, we are loading the buses and pulling out of Caledonia to take you to the start of the race. So you're gonna start at another spot, we will bust you there, and then you are going to race back to parking lot three. Yes, ma'am? Are our bikes staying at South Downtown Registration Center? They are. They are staying there until you pick them up. Yeah. So there will be an official staging area there. You will stage them, and then you will retrieve them from there. Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Do I want to know this question? Go ahead. Yes, bikes will be supervised. Yes. So we're loading buses and we are moving out. The uh, anticipated start of the race is 930. When we get to the designated start area, you'll be given instructions as to how that's going to occur. Uh, but make sure you realize that there are no facilities, there are no bathrooms, there are no conveniences of any kind at the start. So take care of all of that stuff before you get on the bus. And don't be late, because the bus will leave without you. Uh, if you are eating, the food will be back at Oak Pavilion between 1 and 5. At 3 o'clock, you see we're going to have a words presentation. Uh, we also have sponsors who are going to be there from, or are able to be there from 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock. That will be happening in that same area, in the Oak Pavilion, parking lot 3 area. So uh, if you want to come out and say thank you to the sponsors, you want to see what it is they do. They will not be selling things there. There's nothing being sold on race day, but they might have some displays for you. You might be able to see uh, what it is that they do, and you can certainly thank them for their part in the race. And then at 5 o'clock, race course closed. All right, so required equipment. Anything on here that is a big surprise to anybody? So I want to make uh, a recommendation. You've probably noticed that you have an additional waiver form this year, and that waiver is for um, the uh, Valley Quarries. So we are going to be in a very sandy area. Uh, if you've ever been running on the beach, you know sand is going to get everywhere, and it's at a point in the race where it's probably going to be aggravating to you to run or bike or whatever for the remainder of the race with shoes and socks filled with sand. So I recommend that you take that into account and make provisions to make sure that you can race comfortably for the remainder of the race after that point. Extra socks, whatever it is that you need to do. So that's not at the very end. It's not at the very end. The one new thing that's on here that wasn't in the past is the space blanket. Um, we are asking you to bring that just to help with, it's, it's usually cold. So just take note that that is something new that has not been on that before. Did you guys all hear that? The space blanket is an addition that we have put on there uh, because we have noticed that probably our primary complaint and issue with this race is hypothermia. Mild though it is, make sure that you're prepared to deal with the cold weather. I'll have some extra ones around, but I won't have enough for everybody, so. Great. Yeah. One for what does it say? One for team. One for team. One for team. Yes, yes. Are they based on how? Walmart sells them. Yeah, pretty much. 
is not a big investment, but when you are cold, it is well worth the having. Uh, so the question was carabiners needing a particular rating, and the carabiners that we are asking you to carry are not for your life support. So the answer is no. You do not have to have one that is meets the ANSI gate load rating or breaks at 10,000 pounds. Just have a carabiner per person. Other questions about the equipment? This is equipment you need on all times. Correct. You have to carry the fire repair kits. Uh, well, I'm going to leave that up to you. Just make sure that you have them when you get to your <laughs> Other questions about this? Yes, sir. Just uh, instead of the repair kits for the flat tires, can everybody in the team just carry it too? As long as you are able to repair two flat tires, you can demonstrate the ability to repair two flat tires, and that, that meets our criteria. We can just leave those in the bikes. That is gonna be that's gonna be part of your bike check-in. But the bike helmets have to be with you at all times. Yes, but the bike helmets have got to be with you because if you have raced before you know that we are requiring those. Uh, for some of the challenges, and so that could be the case again this year. I want you to be prepared for that. Anybody else? Questions? Okay, so we're moving on to rules. And since this is such a drag, we're going to let Jim do it. Thank you. I see uh, some of you making a uh, record of the rules and the slides, but how many of you have read the rules? Captains, do you have the rules? Okay. They should have been given out to you. You cannot leave without them. Okay? You should have been given the, your rules with the response uh, with your registration. Okay? That's important because I'm only going to cover the highlights tonight and it's important. This is the way we run the race. So when we ask you to step aside because of a certain condition that you can't race, it's because it's in the rules. Because you get a 10 yard violation, it's in the rules. Okay? So you need to have a copy of that. I'm only going to review the highlights. This is a team event, and I think we have, yeah, that's the first one or second one up there. Let me go to the second one. The team must stay together in a 10th yard envelope at all times. Okay? Now, the, we give you some latitude on that because it's intention. Okay? If you are intending to race as four individuals, you will probably get a 10 yard violation because somebody will be out front waiting for somebody else. Okay? If that person out front is looking back, slowing down, so his team catches up or her team catches up, that's not a violation. You race as a team, okay? Eric has mentioned before, all racers must have their helmets. You don't know because the course is not given to you beforehand. It will be rolled out. The reason for that is you must have your helmet when you're on the bike and when you're in a bike or in a challenge. You don't know when those challenges are going to be. So you have to have that helmet on your person at all times. Number three up here is uh, something we have never done before. It gives me great concern. And so I want you to hear this loud and clear, okay? There is gonna be about a third of a mile that is gonna be ridden on a bike on Route 30. Pardon me, beside Route 30. Okay, the rules say, and the Pennsylvania law says, for biking, you have the same rules as a car, except on Sunday. Okay? Sunday, you will be asked to cross Route 30 with the help of fire police and volunteers. You will be asked to ride a third of a mile counter to traffic. Nice wide shoulder. You are not to ride on the road, and you ride as far off of the road as you can. 
for that third of a mile to you then go into the course okay you understand that when you get out there but i caution you uh fire police will be there it is uh something that's going to be unusual 30 will be cone uh to caution or be caution lights up and so forth but please be very careful there's just no way of doing the course without getting across 30, so we had to do it. The MTEC course on the maps are highlighted in pink, okay? You are going to be given, we've made maps off of the Appalachian Trail. The Appalachian Trail is in yellow, okay? So if you are given a trail map that shows a pink trail and a yellow trail, which one do you take? Pink. If you happen to be given a map that has go from point A to point B any way you can, what does that mean? That means go any way you can. Follow me? Okay. Racer numbers need to be displayed in your purse and bikes at all times. Next slide. You must have your passport, that's how we control the race, that's at all times. If you're in a challenge, you're in a raft, you're on your bikes, whatever, you have to have that. Uh, as Eric said, one of the challenges, and I'm going to reiterate this because I'll tell you a story. Uh, one of the first two years of this race, we had a Sutton of Hummer uh, race team. They've been a big part of our race early on. They're a professional, I say professional race team. Uh, they went on to run the Real Eco Challenge, and it's a six to seven day race called a Primal Quest. And uh, when I talked to Sam one time, I said, yeah, I'm running the race. I said, where's it going? He said, 100 miles across the Mojave Desert, or wherever he was running. And he said, we're wearing aqua socks in a desert. He said, because the sand will chew your feet up. Okay? We're going into Valley Quarries. Obviously, you probably figure out where that is. Okay? Two important things. One is, we don't have required socks. I really am promoting that you have an extra pair of socks. Okay? That's the first thing. The course that you will follow in Valley Quarries is not on the map. You will be instructed by volunteers. You are free to look around, but you are not free to wander. Okay, you're not free to go to an edge of a, a beautiful view unless instructed because you don't know if that's going to give way and fall. Okay, stay on the course. You've all signed waivers that said it doesn't matter, but it does matter to us. Okay, <laughs> let me just review a few here. Uh, I want to make sure that you know the doc. Dr. Laszlo, just raise your hand. He'll be out on the course. He'll be there. I want to review at the same time on the rules, the emergency medical procedure, okay? In the rules, I'm reading this. In case of a medical emergency, the team whistle is to be blown, how many times? Three times every 30 seconds until, until help arrives. Additionally, a team member should proceed forward not backwards to the next checkpoint or observation point and advise the officials okay so your job if someone is severely injured and cannot move is to blow the whistle three times every 30 seconds send a team member forward not backwards because the course is collapsing behind you always go forward until you find a volunteer or till you see help and we have a calm network that then will uh, communicate to have the doctor brought on site. I think we may have covered it here. Obviously a checkpoint is a, a stop point. Do you have any questions? What's that? Actually, since last year, there have only been a few minor. One was a space blanket that was added. Can you guys help me? I don't think there was too many changes. 
One of the big changes was there is no electronic documentation this year. I'll put it that way. Our checkpoints are all physical checks. Okay, so that means the use, you can carry a cell phone. Um, please don't use it to cheat. If we see a cell phone out, we're gonna ask, what are you doing? There better be an emergency, okay? So uh, electronic devices are not to be used in the course of the race this year. That's about all I can think of. Captains are going to get their passports tonight. That's not true. So if when you get a copy of the rules and it says that, don't uh, be upset. You're not going to get your passport till checking. Questions or comments about the the course? I know Eric is going to cover some of the challenges here, and then we're sort of done. We'll have the volunteers meet afterwards. But I'll take some questions at this point while we're here. Yeah. No life vest paddles and rafts will be provided. I will tell you that we're going to do something on the water we have never done before. Ever. Who's <laughs> new? Rafts and paddles and PFDs will be provided. I, I, yeah, that's enough said about that. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this one. Okay. Yes, Any prediction at all what the fast race finish would be? I'm just thinking about water. Right. 20 minutes would be a fast race finish. <laughs> Does that answer your question? <laughs> you know, every, every year we try to do that. We actually sat down and say, how long is this going to take? Um, Five was the quickest, wasn't it? It's 9.30. 1.30. It could be four and a half, maybe. Four, four and a half. Two, six, or eight. Yes. <laughs> and I, and I, I'll say this again. You know, and I've said this before to you. I bring up the tail end of the race. I'm happy to stay out there as long as it's safe. You run this race for two reasons. You're here tonight. How many of you are first time racers? Or represent first team? That's a lot. Okay? That's a lot. You're sitting here for two reasons as a team. I will tell you, you're here to win the race, that's out front, and you're here to finish it, okay? And I applaud those guys that go in four hours, and I applaud the ones that go in eight, okay? And I'll bring up the tale of the eight hours, as long as it's safe to be out there, I will tell you many stories that we've stayed out there eight hours because the team wanted to finish. And we've finished in the dark. Okay? Bill. That's a good that's a good uh, thing. Yeah, most most of the time it's been hypothermia. And this this time the weather's supposed to be cool and sunny. But you can get wet, you probably will get wet. So hypothermia is one of the big ones. Most of the time it's like cuts and uh, sprained ankle and that sort of thing. Cramps. Cramping. Cramps, yeah. Cramping. So stay hydrated, take enough uh, nutrition with you. That's pretty much the, anything bigger than that goes in the ambulance. We really haven't had to use helicopters or ambulances or anything like that. <laughs> but good. Keep it that way. I think the ambulance has been used for a heater. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll get warm. Yeah. yeah. Question. The, the, the one area and that was that was your husband's question. <laughs> well, that, there is no without tipping you off totally what it is. Uh, there is no official trans. There is no official transition area. Okay. However, you will be in parking lot three several times. So if there is a spot. Drop it at parking lot three. It's um, probably a good halfway, maybe quite halfway. 
That would be as close to a transition area as we have this year. It's a good question. And, and you have to carry your own water, your own food, your own nutrients. That's part of the rules. And uh, then we will have food provided for you. Similar to last year, there will be uh, soups and sandwiches and, and uh, apples and fruits when you finish. Okay, but not during the race. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me just, while I'm thinking, okay? One important thing that we've had past problems with, it is in the rules, there are no sag wagons. Okay, do you know what I mean by sag wagon? Okay, so if you have somebody that wants to follow you around the race, that's probably not going to happen. Because what happens is, you have the first sort of start, but you have no clue when you get on a bus where you're going. Okay? And so people say, okay, they're on the bus, let's follow the bus. The bus is gone to a place where we can barely get the bus in. And I'm going to ask my volunteers to walk some because we don't have room for cars. So we don't need people coming along behind them. Okay? Plus it's dangerous. It's dangerous to have sag wagons. So please make sure you carry what you need in your backpacks on your person. And if people want to see the race, tell them to go to Long Pine Dam or parking lot three. And watch you finish and watch the midterm race. I have a question back here. So are we allowed to leave the parking lot three? Yes. And it will be it will be secure. We have volunteers there all day. So we are making provisions for you when you come in and say, hey, I got a tote here. We prefer you to have a tote somewhere that's a secure thing. Mark with your team. Okay, it'll be in a spot that's where it'll be when you come back through. Yes. Question over here. Okay, that was my question too. You said carry all food and water, so we can't refuel with water there? You can refuel with water, yeah. When you come through that area, you can grab your snacks, grab your water, but that's on your person, that's in your tub. Okay? Don't look for a water stop from us or a food stop from us, okay? But when you're coming back through with your stuff, you're free to stop and, you know, fuel up. So you can bring an extra parachute. Yep, yep. You can have your socks there, whatever you want there. We have a vehicle. Your vehicles will be parked close to parking lot three. Yep. Where is parking? parking lot three relative to what we see on this map down here. Yeah, the that, I, I gotta tell you, we gotta, let me, uh, we probably need a little bit of a blow up of that area. Do we have one, Chris, we can blow up? Yeah. We have a map without, be careful which one to put up. <laughs> All right, let me give you a little explanation. We'll try to walk you through visually. But that long red line in the middle there is about a six mile uphill the South Mountain. So let me sort of walk you through. Everybody know where County Union Park is. Everybody know where the intersection of Route 30 and 233 is. Stop you, stop light. Okay. From that intersection, yeah. See if we can blow up. I don't know if we can, I don't know if we can blow this up a lot. Uh, Okay, let me, uh, let me just sort of walk you through here a little bit. Caledonia Park is, uh, here's the intersection of Route 30 and 233. Okay, parking lot 3 is you go north just a little bit on 233, turn into the park, go around parking lot 1, parking lot 2 is back here, and you run to the end of the road, that's parking lot 3. It's a dirt parking lot. Okay, so between two and three, that's where we say parking lot three is. If that answered your question on that, okay. Now, from the intersection at the top of the page to the next intersection is a, about a five-mile uphill drive to a T. You can't go forward anymore. I call it the lily pond. There is a lily pond which you might not see in the dark directly in front of you. Okay, you really can't miss it. You come to the stop sign, okay, you turn left, okay, and you go about 100 yards to the first dirt road on the right. You will see volunteers. That's where your bikes are. Okay? 
that when you get on that road, what Eric said, once you're on that road, you'll be given instructions to drop your bike, park your car, drop your bikes, get back in your car, and continue on that dirt road, which is here, back to 233, turn right, and you'll come back to the lily pond and then come back to parking lot three. Okay, so it's a little circle. Better or worse? Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things, once you see it, you'll have it. Any questions? All right, Eric, I'll let you go over the challenges and then ask questions as you can. We'll finish it off with that. Yes. Um, this uh, PowerPoint presentation is going to go onto our Facebook page. So if you need to re re go back to it and with the maps or anything, it will be posted here tomorrow morning. Um, as well as we have our videographer, Greg Miller here. Um, he is videotaping us um, so that we can post that there too. We have a couple teams that can't be here. So everything that we say tonight will be on our Facebook page to so make sure you like us and then you will be able to rewatch it in case you didn't catch something. Look under M Tech where it says what our Facebook is. Okay, so just real briefly to wrap up, the uh, challenges, which are the part of the race that's kind of near and dear to my heart. Let me just put it to you this way. I wanna I wanna kind of put you in the right perspective. Whether you're racing to win or you're racing to finish. You need to remember that MTech is a, uh, it's a couple of things, and, and it's not a bloodthirsty, cutthroat, win at all cost kind of race. This is a team oriented, uh, find out what adventure racing is about, see if you can stretch yourself, see if you can learn some new components of this thing that we call adventure racing. It's very much a team and learning environment. And so I say that to you for two reasons. And the first one, which is frankly just an annoyance, uh, is that there's been this pattern evolve of, we'll call it creative interpretation of the rules. Uh, so in years past, we've done a, an orienteering challenge where uh, the orienteering marks have mysteriously moved uh, so that teams suddenly can't complete the orienteering course. We've done a uh, puzzle where a puzzle piece mysteriously vanished. And so a team was left trying to complete a puzzle, a seven piece puzzle with only six of the pieces. Uh, last year, somehow the water that was filling the jugs at the starting line, a lot of it turned into sand. And we wound up like removing tons of sand from a uh, challenge. And so what I would like to remind you is this. You all are racing for a rock. If it's, you really want to rock, I'll be happy to get you one. I will take names and I'll go out and get you a rock. But what we're asking is first and foremost this, is that when you come to a challenge, when you come to a place and you're given instructions, you can either interpret the instructions in the spirit in which they're given, or you can get a set of instructions which fill every loophole, dot every I, cross every T, and it, it's about that thick for every challenge. It's a stack of papers about 700 pages long. So we're asking that you not make this into a legalistic battle. Well, you didn't say. You didn't tell me I couldn't. I thought maybe. It's pretty clear. The challenges are all pretty clear. You, and 99% of the people interpret them exactly the right way. And then there's that 1% that really is excited about that rock. And we wind up hunting for pieces and cleaning up things. It just becomes a mess. So remember, it's a learning and it's a team-oriented uh, endeavor. Keep that in perspective. So the second thing is this, and probably the more important thing, is at the challenges, the challenge staff, there will be race volunteers and there will also be challenge staff, who are my staff from Cedar Ridge. Uh, the challenge staff have got the ultimate say as to yay or nay, whether you go, whether you stop. And their concern, their only concern, is your safety. 
Uh, they are not interested in how fast you can accomplish it. They are not interested in anything other than making sure that you complete the challenge safely. Uh, and so what I need you to remember is that they are there to keep you safe and that there are people in this race who are experiencing these things for the very first time. Make sure that you don't hinder the challenge staff from doing their job and keeping every racer safe. That is their only concern, is making sure that everybody goes as safely as possible. Now having said that, they're all pretty good at what they do and they will not dally, I promise. They are, they are pretty expeditious. But let them do their job, you standing and nagging them or tapping your foot or checking your watch every 10 seconds is not gonna help. So let them do their job. We are gonna do everything we can to keep you moving, but we want you to be safe. And that is, that's why they're there. All right, I, I'm not, I can't in good conscience tell you anything else. So I'll answer questions, but mostly I just want you to wonder. <laughs> So thank you all. If you have questions, please see us. Uh, if you have questions about this especially, yeah, if anyone else has questions, please ask. So all that will be provided to me? Correct. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you all for being a part of this. Uh, next year, if you could register like a week or two earlier, that would help us out. But thanks. <laughs> We appreciate you all showing up and we anticipate a great day. So good luck. See you Sunday. Thank you.